four games are in the books, and since their awful performance in Chicago, the Islanders have rattled off a pair of wins in Brooklyn. The most recent of the two, a 4-3 victory over previously unbeaten Nashville on Thursday, was an impressive feat, even though the Isles were rather unimpressive at times. For what at S worth, they pulled up four goals on Pekarin and on a defense that S among the best in the NHL. John Tavares made Shea Weber and Roman Josie look like pylons on several shifts, and recorded his fifth and sixth points of the season, one goal, one assist. Side note, coach, you have last change at home. Is there a reason Tavares was always out there against Nashville's best defense pairing? Jack Capuano wants to see more of his forwards get involved in the goal-scoring department and, slowly but surely, his wish is being fulfilled. The secondary scoring is gonna have to pick up, Capuano said. We were starting to see it pick up a little bit now. We were gonna have to get our defense actively involved. If you're gonna have success in this league, you can't e rely on one guy or one line. It's just not gonna happen. You need all four lines generating, and you're gonna have to get points from your back end. Capuano is not the only one who'd like to see more secondary scarring. Fans have been clamoring for the team to go out and acquire another winger for months, though in this writer's opinion it would just be gravy and is otherwise an unnecessary move at this juncture. With the exception of a 4-1 loss in the Windy City, the Isles' top line of Travaris, Anders Lee and Ryan Strom has been flying out there, so the points will come. Maybe you see Kyle Okposo and Strom trade places or something to that effect but the bottom line is that there are plenty of quality options for Travares as far as wingers are concerned. Even still, the Islanders go as Travares goes, just as most teams do with their superstars. But I think these lines just need time to gel and you could certainly see that happening on Thursday night. The second line, Franz Nielsen. Josh Bailey and Okposo still needs more time, but Okposo did notch his first goal of the season darting into the Nashville zone and letting go a confident wrist shot that went bar down and past one of the best goalies in the world. I was particularly impressed with the trio of Mikhail Grabowski, Nikolai Kulemin and Brock Nelson and thought they got better as the game wore on. They've combined for seven points through the first four games, and the Islanders will need them to continue providing that type of support. I asked Capuano for his impression of Gribovsky, who was moved back to center in training camp. There is still some things he has to get better with, the coach said. But overall, he has been pretty good for us and he has been really good for us in the face-off circle. Grabowski has won 52.4% of his draws, and the Islanders have been excellent in that category since opening night. Travares's face-off win rate is 57.7%, while Nielsen's rating, get it, is a remarkable 61.8. Franz currently leads the league in face-off win percentage among players who've each taken at least 30 draws. That as an area in which the Isles have struggled tremendously over the past few years, so it is good to see them winning face-offs early on. Obviously, the key is to keep that trend going. Another thing I noticed on Thursday night was that the Islanders appeared to be using the terrain and characteristics of their home rink to their advantage. The boards at Barclays Center generate some unique caroms and it looked to me like Nelson purposely missed the net with his shot so that the rebound would pinball right into the slot for a wide-open Q Lemon. I asked Q Lemon if it was a set play or at the very least something the Isles have discovered and have worked on in practice. He told me that it was, we know the boards are live here and try to use them, Q Lemon said. So I always have to be ready around the net because bucks come out straight in front. When I asked Capuano the same question, he was more reserved, when they work hard, they get in good spots and the buck s gonna find them. And that s what I tell them. The Isles have, for the most part, gotten the job done 5 on 5, but they v had some trouble on the power play. I think there is simply too much talent on this roster for that should be a going concern. Between Johnny Boychuk, Nick Letty and Marek Zidalecki is blue line options. 
having Tavares and Strom as playmakers in the circles, a guy like Lee who can go to the front of the net, and someone like Okposo who can muscle off defenders, come out of the corners with bucks and make plays, there is absolutely zero reason why the Islanders should have a bad power play. A lot of it has to do with having the right personnel out there. I don't feel like the idea of Nielsen at the point, even if he enters the zone well. Boychuk and Letty need to be out there with the top power play unit. Your best skating and puck moving defense seven should be paired with your booming shot on the top unit, with your most skilled guys collecting the puck down low or getting it back to the point. That hasn't always happened, so to me that is a big part of why they've had trouble finishing with the man advantage. It is about having the right mix of players on the ice together. I think the power play units need to be redesigned to some extent, but I don't think the solution is all that difficult to implement either. Even still, the Isles should at least be more effective than they've been on the power play. I think it has more to do with a lack of finish than an inability to enter the zone. They've got guys who can gain the zone. I also thought Nashville and Chicago both did a great job taking away entry lanes and clogging passing and shooting lanes. It also looked to me like guys were trying to feel it out the first few opportunities they had during those first two games. That plays a part here, too. Against Winnipeg you saw more flow in the offensives on when the Islanders had the man advantage. As I said, I don't think this is going to be a persistent issue, and I think it is just a matter of fine-tuning and getting the right players in the right spots. The more the Isles win, the more tight and the focus becomes on hockey. Given recent events, that really needs to happen. As long as the puck is going in the net, fans can cheer about that.